Hi, we're here today uh, with our Arizona Drag Racing Legends with, with Dan Owen of Tucson, Arizona. Uh, we're here, at, and we happen to be at Tucson Dragway during their annual reunion race, and this is where people in Southern Arizona get, you know, brought into the Arizona Drag Race or Hall of Fame, which is going to happen a little bit later tonight. So, congratulations on that. Well, thank you, thank you. What, what does uh, that mean to you? Well, um, what I would say to you is, I don't think I deserve it, but the right person nominated me and obviously he thought I deserved it and the committee thought I deserved it so with that I'm grateful well that's a that's really a big honor you know, yeah. you're, you're, you know you're part of their of, of Arizona drag racing heritage yeah. and that part of what that story we're going to talk about now is what makes you an Arizona drag racing legend so how do you feel like people calling you the legend is it like well, I don't know. They call me. They actually call me Uncle Dan, not the legend. But uh, well, it might change. Yeah, you never know. But the thing of it is, is you know, I I, I moved to Tucson in 1963, and uh, my old man worked at O'Reilly Chevrolet. So that that was a big deal for me. I started getting into Chevrolets. I mean, I got my first car as a tra you know, it was a '55 Chevy that my old man took in on trade. Then my '67 Chevelle, and it went like that, you know. In 1965, I moved in next door to Red Greth. And it was uh, all over. It was all over. The rest is history. Um, How old were you then? I was nine, maybe, nine, ten, something like that. Wow. And obviously, Kendall and Kent and Red's two sons were my age. So between the three of us, we uh, caused a lot, of, uh, a lot of problems in the neighborhood. But Kenton was always a good one. It was me and Kendall. But uh, I, I was blessed. I mean, you know, I joke about it. Um, I didn't know anything about drag racing. I went out one weekend with the Greths and the rest is history. Do you remember where you went? Tucson Dragway. Yep. On, on the old, the old one on Houghton and Porman. And uh, that was in the middle of nowhere back then. So, um, but you know, the, the I, and I talked to uh, someone earlier about it. We were uh, actually, Mike Savage uh, was in my store the other day talking to me, and uh, we were talking about drag racing and all this stuff, and Mike used to drive jet cars, and I said, I said, well, you know, I never got to drive a jet car, and uh, we started talking about it, and I said, well, wait a minute, when Palamedes used to spend the night at Red's house, or p leave his car parked there in the front yard, I must have made a thousand runs in that car sitting in it pretending like I was making quarter mile passes. R Romeo. Yeah. And and it was, you know, yeah. Caramacini's, Evil Knievel, uh, Jimmy Nix, uh, Garlitz, all those all those people uh, I had the privilege of uh, meeting one on one because of Red Greth. The uh, y you Ten years old at this time, mm -hmm. uh, you went on, you know, loving drag racing, loving racing. Go to high school. Uh, when you went into high school, you know, you got other people with cars and stuff. Did you feel that you, because of what you knew, what they knew, you kind of like knew more than they did a little bit, and you know, you you brought them along into it as well. That's why. Did you did you say come out to the races with me? No, I was pretty independent, and you know. Um, what was lucky is that Lyle and Red had this shop over off of Speedway and Craycroft, and every minute I had, I was over at the shop and I learned how to use tools and equipment and weld. And uh, you know, I mean, I remember spending hours on the bandsaw cutting out brackets for some of the speed sport cars I built. And that was just, you know, that was a big deal to me because here I am, this 12 or 13 year old punk, building car parts because of their knowledge. Or polish, Lyle used to make spoke front wheels for dragsters. All of us spent many hours on the buffing machine buffing spokes. Not an easy job. Yeah. And, and, um, so you, you, you got this great mentorship, tutorship fr from Lyle. And Red. And Red, I mean, and Red, excuse me. Yeah. And, uh, and the, uh, you started you know, 10, 13, 14 years old. When was the time for you to start building your, your first race car? I, I went down, I was a sophomore in high school. Where'd no, you go to high school? Swirl High School okay. here in Tucson. I had no driver's license. Uh, back in the days at Tucson Dragway on Wednesday nights, they had an open, well now we call it open test and tune. I don't know what they used to call it back then. 
So me and my buddy took his mom's Datsun 510 sedan out there with an automatic, and that was the first car I ever drove down the drag strip, and I was hooked. Wow. Yeah. So we kept we 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 took turns driving it that night, and then I uh, got a '67 Chevelle while I was in high school, and uh, that was my first first drag car, and many many different styles and versions and class cars have I had. Uh, the last time I competitively raced was in probably the late 80s. I sat in the staging lanes at Firebird for three and a half hours during a jet car show, and I said, I'm never going to do that again. And that was the last time I drag raced competitively. Uh, uh, one thing about drag racing, you better have a lot of friends because you do a lot of waiting. Yes. You know, a lot of people exactly to visit right. with. That's exactly right. But, you, but they didn't stop you from being involved with racing. No, 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 no. I, I was still involved. And, I mean, we closed the track. I As Bob Huff took over the track, the old de drag strip, in 1968, and he had it up until about, uh, I would say the mid-'70s probably. Um, Red had just built the the extended version of the speed sport car we'd done a match race with garlets out there and it wasn't long after that that bob huff got out of the business and uh, gerald johns took it over and uh, i worked out there for a little while with gerald but um, we had different ways of doing business so i left um, and then i was done with drag racing i mean i i shouldn't say i was done with drag racing i still had a volkswagen drag race car uh, i i would had gone to Orange County a couple times, and and every once in a while during a test and tune, I'd go out and and play around. But I just got tired of the the waiting. You know, it's part of drag racing. But you know, in in the earlier days at the old Tucson Dragway, I mean, I got I, I worked all areas. I worked in tech. Um, I announced for a while. I ran the clocks. Um, you know, I did a lot of different things in different aspects of drag racing. And Steve Barr, who was a track manager there, I would say to you, as far as operational goes, he was my mentor. He, that guy knew everything about everything, and uh, he was really, really good. So the wonderful Tucson Dragway, both of them are wonderful tracks, the new one and the old one. And you had a lot to do with the new one, even being here. But, yeah. but the, the old Tucson Dragway, uh, guy living in Phoenix, remember, got to come down to Tucson. I always enjoyed it. Never had a bad time at Tucson Dragway. It was, I love the people, the friendships. Everyone was so, so, everybody was so, so welcoming. But you had some shows that were bigger than others. What were your favorite shows back in those days? My favorite show, probably the, the, the one that was most, that stuck out more than anything else was in 1968 when Bob Hoff took over the show. He was going to do a promotion and he brought in eight funny cars for a match race. And it was a big deal back then. And uh, they had contact O'Reilly Chevrolet so like two days prior to the drag race all the cars would be on display over at the Chevrolet dealership up in the showroom with the bodies up and they used to I mean that's how it used to be that's how they used to promote drag racing you know because they weren't buying airtime on the radios back then at least locally there was here. no Facebook there was yeah <laughs> no social email. media I still don't yeah. do that but uh, whatever and and that that was probably one of my most memorable times but you know, some of the other things that were memorable to me back at Tucson Dragway was riding in a push car, pushing off a car from the top end, and, you know, hearing that car build up oil pressure and then letting them hit that mag switch and then seeing the flames come up over the hood of the car. You know, that's probably one of my most favorite memories. And the other thing that, that Red always made us feel like we were a part of, um, you know, things that we got to do was to take the oil out into the desert and pour it and then put new oil into the into the car you know and th that was a big deal sure. i mean here i am a punk kid working on a on a top fuel dragster you know so i i that experience of riding in a push car uh all kind of went away when they started static starting race cars but i still remember that was the most awesome feeling to sit in the car and you could feel the you know, the, they let the clutch out, and before they hit the mag, you actually yeah. felt it in the car. Oh, yeah. And you yeah. could feel it, and all of a sudden you felt the vibrations. And the moment they lit it off, the vibration went away, and you see the car. Flames pop up, and then shoot away from you. Yeah. What a great experience that people, I, I just wish people could do it still. Yeah. And it, it, it's the simplest of experiences, but that's your passion for racing. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, it was a big deal to be down at the hot car lane. You'd turn on the light, and then when there was a break, they'd let you push out. And 
And but then, then you had to go down and help pull the car back. Oh yeah, and turn around back it up, yeah. turn it around, and all that stuff. And I remember one time, Red and Lyle were also promoters. Besides owning the drag strip, they would put on a huge car show down on Speedway in between at this big building in between Craycroft and Wilmot, and they used to call it Motorama. And they did it in 1965 and 1966, and it was huge. I mean, uh, corporations got involved. Um, but the, the one thing that I remember, there's a couple things. Um, I think his name was Chuck Poole at a wheel stander. Mm -hmm. They shut down Speedway in between. They actually shut it down between Wilmot and Craycroft. And he went out and did wheel stands. But what was better than that is uh, at the time, Bill Breck Dodge was like the big Dodge dealership here in town. Evil Knievel came to one of those shows they brought 16 or 17 Dodges, parked them on Speedway, and Knievel jumped over them. And this was on Speedway. To experience all that kind of stuff, is, it's, I'm getting goosebumps I, thinking about I, it. I, me too. And I can just picture, I've seen Tucson grow up, so I'm you know, back in the, I mean, Tucson was, it was a smaller town. Yep. You know, a lot smaller. And people knew people, and for the yeah. shutdown, that was a main drag through, you know, road through town. And, and to get the city behind it and allow you to do it, there was a lot of, community back I don't know that the city was behind it. Well, they allowed you to do it. Well, I think Red and Lyle knew some cops. Okay. We'll just leave that at that. Okay, there's, <laughs> okay. We can't go into there and there yeah. might be some. Okay, yeah. we'll close that page. Yeah. Uh, so you, you go forward, you, you take a little time out of racing, but you still you still love racing. I know you, you've taken some pictures, you've done some, you got some other things that you, you like, but how did you, what bit your bug to get more back, you know, get back into well, racing. when 97 when they opened up this track I, I went out I, I wanted to get back involved and um, so I came out here and started doing tech and it wasn't a year late Ben Wilson was out here doing tech and uh, he took me aboard and you know Ben got busy while, with the national event stuff and all that uh, ultimately I ended up being the tech director out here and uh, it kept me it kept me involved later on I started working the staging lanes I was a staging director for for four or five years uh, it was my passion, you know, burning rubber. Who doesn't love it? Um, but what happened for me to really get back involved was, uh, so 62, uh, 2012 was the 50th anniversary of Tucson Dragway. So I went over to Reds and I says, we need to do something. He says, you're right, we do. So. I then decided to become an amateur promoter. And Careful uh, what you wish for. Yeah, right. So, yeah. and that's why I always oh, that's all I'm going to ever take claim for is that I'm an amateur race promoter. So I said, let's put on a reunion race, and we did. We ended up with you know a dozen cackle cars and 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 some other stuff, and uh, I ran it really low key. Uh, brought the WFA in the first first event, um, which was a big deal, and uh, we started running with it. And uh, I did it for years and years and years until, well, actually, even this year, I'm still involved in the Uncle Dan's Tri-5 deal I got rolling on. I mean, obviously, because of the state of our country right now, um, it has been tuned way down, which is fine. And Matt didn't want to let this event go away. So Matt DeYoung? Yeah. So you, you were part of the, the Tucson Dragway, old Tucson Dragway reunion for Tucson Dragway here. in. And initially, when the track opened up, it wasn't called Tucson Dragway here. S Southwestern International and Raceway. And when Jim came, Jim Hughes came and took the track over, eventually it became it became Tucson Dragway. Yeah, what, I, there's a whole story behind that, too. So um, Tucson Dragway was trademarked. A buddy of mine died. His wife turned the trademark over to me. So when Matt and Jim took over the place, um, well, I, I, when John Bradford and Tom Keenan decided they were done, they had left IHRA and they were not going to run the track anymore. They, IHRA had brought some different managers in, uh, and we tried to keep it going, um, but IHRA was struggling at the time, and uh, they decided that they were just going to, they were done with drag racing. So... Um, I seriously looked into taking over the lease of the track and uh, I talked to some of my mentors and they said don't do it and I knew Hughes was in the running for it so I called up Jim and I said Jim 
here's the deal, buddy. So he came down, uh, Matt came down here with him, and uh, we kind of walked around and looked around, and like Jim said, he always wanted to have a restaurant. It just so happened that this one had a drag strip attached to it. And, uh, and they had left, and I had called Hughes, and Matt just completely impressed me, and I called Hughes when he was driving back to Phoenix. I said, you, you don't need to hire a manager. You already got one, and that was Matt DeYoung. Yeah, they're both Good special kid. people. Yeah, yeah, awesome. You know, if you knew his dad, you know where Matt can. You know, Matt, he's just like his dad. You right, know, and right, his dad right. was a great person that mentored me and got me in a lot of places uh, through the years. Uh, he was his dad was in my in my wedding. So I mean, there you go. So it's a small world. The drag racing is a small, small family spread out all over the place, and right. it, it's fun. Uh, so Tucson Dragway, Jim Hughes has a lot of experience as a racer, uh, knows what he liked and, and didn't like. Uh, Tucson needs a drag strip. You were going. You, you saw the deal, uh, you, but you came in and you helped promote different events and uh, the the, right. the reunion events. And your passions here, and you you've been here to to help out. And a lot of what you've done, so you know, is like this is part of the, your Arizona drag racing legend because your passion for racing. You know, it takes somebody to put his name on the bottom line and sign an agreement and pay the checks, right. but it takes a group of people to help support the passion, and you're one of them. Thank um, you. And you should be very proud of that. The uh, you you now do a, a your, tell us about the your, your tri five. Well, this is just a thing. Um, I got approached a couple of years ago by the people who do the tri five nationals, and we talked about doing one on the west coast. Uh, ultimately, Bakersfield got the deal, which I believe it got canceled this year. Um, I've my passion is tri five Chevys. Half of the tri fives that are out in the pits this weekend are cars that I used to own. Um, and I thought, you know what, let's just put together a bracket race for the Chevys. So 55, 6, and 7 Chevys, we're going to have a bracket race for it. And Matt came up with this Uncle Dan's Tri-5 Showdown, so that's your what Uncle Dan. did. Yeah, I'm Uncle the legend. Dan, and yeah, a legend in his own mind. Or in your own, or your own yeah. time. Yeah, and you know, I mean, I built some neat trophies for it, and, and it was just kind of a fun deal. And all these kids that have these cars now, I mean, what, for me, um, what I love about the sport of drag racing is these young kids are buying cars with a small block Chevy and coming out and drag racing instead of a Toyota Supra or a Nissan Maxima or whatever, you know. And the, I, I can't take away the import part of it because I, that was the, when I was drag racing, I drag raced Volkswagens for many, many years. I won the bug in a few times uh, here uh, up in Phoenix, Orange County. And that, for me, was my claim of fame. I've had several race cars, uh, class cars, junior fuelers, uh, super gas. You know, I, I've, I've had it all, but I never raced any of them competitively. It was just more come out to the drag strip, fire it up, make a hit. Make some noise. Put it in the trailer. Feel you know? the need for speed. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. What you've done with it, the reunion race, it's kind of given, not kind of, it absolutely has given the Arizona Drag Race for Hall of Fame in, in Southern Arizona, a home. Right. And you know, we, we definitely tie a lot together with Tucson Dragway, just as the Goosick Drag Race reunion in, in Phoenix that takes care of the other part of the right, state. Right, right, right. right. Uh, we have a it's, it's a, it's a nice honor to be, there's names that are, of people that are in there that I'm sure that, you know, you're going in and, and Red's in there and you're looking at that, that's my mentor, that's my, my idol. He's I mean, what my is the hero, man, the guy's 85 years old. Yep. And you know you had the honor to interview him earlier, and I mean he doesn't forget anything. Well, and Clint Eastwood has it just turned ninety. You know they ask him how do you stay so young, how do you stay so active, and Clint Eastwood's answer is I don't let the old man in. Right, and that's red. That's red. That's red. The red. There's nothing. And he's always got a smile on his face. Yeah, he's always got a smile on his face. He he's an inspiration to us all. Yeah. And I think anybody. This needs to get a dose of red from time to time. Yeah, I mean, here it, I am yeah, yeah. getting the goosebumps again. So, but there you are. But there's people like that in, that are in, yeah. in that, and and there's you know a lot of big time drag racers and some smaller guys and people that you know. There's other people in the Hall of Fame that maybe not have been a drag racer, but they did things to support the sport that kept it going when it needed to help. And you certainly have filled both. Both you've been a racer, you. you've been an announcer, you've been a track you. employee, you've been a promoter. I look forward to seeing what you do in the future because I don't think you're finished with your love of drag racing. Yeah, that's not yeah. happening. Yeah, no, it's just like gives you a place to be and keeps you out of jail, hopefully. So. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's like a drug. You know, I, there's one of the kids out here that has a 55 Chevy drag car that I bought. Um, there was a fellow that used to race out here in the days, 
his name was Bob Blakely, and it's uh, in this. I rode in the back seat of that car when I was a kid on the streets. That and back then that was a, a true ten second car. Wow, street driven. It was fast. And uh, I I bought this car a couple of years ago after Bob passed, and I was going to do something with it. And this my friend Adam just had he's he is he lives and breathes the tri five Chevy stuff. So I sold it to him, and it's out here today, so I'm anxious to see it run. Well, they're not making them anymore. No, no. But they're making them better. And yeah. they keep, you know, the, all the, you can retro mod a Tri-5. You can, you know, look, you know, uh, uh, you know, Danny Lovett in, has a, a, what, a 57? Beautiful, no, 55. 55, excuse yeah. me. Sorry, Danny. But it's been t totally, it's new chassis, yeah. you know, but it's it's a beautiful car. And the, you know, the heritage of that, but that's the heritage of drag racing is those older cars. I mean, used to be, you know, that used to be the cars that were, you know, in, in the in the lanes. I mean, right. You know, Bill Gusick's first race car was a Tri Five. Different. You know, that's what they had, and they were all over the place, and they're they're affordable. So it's got to make you feel good to see that still going on, and people not afraid to knock the dust off and bring their car right. to the track. You know, I, I've got four of them right now, and and they all get driven. Yeah. And that's what you're supposed to do with them is drive them. Well, well one of these days, we hope you can be able to afford to buy a new car. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. And the other good thing about them is they're easy to work on. Yes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I was, I was younger. I worked on a car that I was lucky. It took a nine a half a nine sixteenths half inch wrench, a screwdriver, and a pair of pliers. I can fix most everything with yeah. those deals. And they, we can't do that anymore. So Not anymore. The simpler life. Well, you know, Dan. Um, congratulations, number Thank one, you. on the Hall of Fame. Thank you. It's well deserved. Uh, I know how it feels to be put on a list with people who have been your idols. I'm and, humbled. And, you know, I mean, I'm you know, it, it's humbled. very humbling, but it's well deserved. And you will be on that list forever. Yeah. And now we've we've interviewed you as an Arizona drag racing legend. And whether we call you the legend or not, you're still Dan Owen and you're still the guy that has a passion for racing and a big a big reason why they're still racing in Tucson, Arizona and we appreciate it. Congratulations on being an Arizona drag racing legend. Thank you. I appreciate it, guys.